I'm Trevor Lynham. I'm from Lynham Painting, based in Kildare. We cover every aspect of painting and decorating, from interior to exterior painting, wallpaper hanging. We also specialise in hand-painted and spray-painted kitchen units. To be honest with you, I didn't know much about the Lean programme, but once I heard about it from another business owner, I signed up straight away. Our biggest challenge that we were trying to address when we first signed up for Lean was our sales process because it was taking way too long from an inquiry end of things to a quotation. When our lean consultant looked at our process, he said he wanted to cut that down by at least half. He developed a quotation software with us. That's an excellent way to start the quotation process off and basically claw back maybe 10 to 12 hours per week. So we have more time to spend on the jobs to make sure that the customer's happy. We then looked at our scheduling software to see is there a software out there that could help us bring it along more efficient, but also integrate everything as one. And we landed on one that uh, our consultant recommended. It's all the job scheduling, it's all the quotations, it's all the invoices, all in one area. So it's just so efficient. You have so much more time to think about what else is going on in the business. So basically what we've been doing with our extra time is we've been basically applying lean to every aspect of the business, whether it's the job scheduling, whether it's the organizing the vans, to see how we can get jobs done faster and more efficient, but also to make sure that the customer's happy on the job as well. The local enterprise office make it so easy to sign up for lean. You literally just go onto their website and sign up. It's that easy. Embrace it because it's going to make your business more efficient. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for, for joining us here uh, for this uh, local enterprise office, the four local enterprise offices uh, across Cork and Kerry, and joining us for a session for their upcoming uh, program in, uh, in September. Um, so looking forward to, to, to hearing from John as we go through the session today as well. I see I've just got an actual fault in my zoom so hopefully you can all see and hear me okay i'm just checking over my shoulder to see if it's actually broadcasting and um, just get a thumbs up if um people that you can actually uh see me okay and that you can see the shared slides the shared screen uh, and i was going to ask for a thumbs up to see if you can hear me but i can obviously guess from the thumbs up that you can see me that we've got that answer to that question all, all, already uh just to start I'm going to ask you guys just to talk a little bit about this 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 hidden week concept have so just kind of take a second and just think to yourself do you lose any time um do you lose any time in the day on pointless tasks any kind of wasteful activities that you experience um and what kind of tasks are they so just pop in the chat there if you can for a second how much time do you think you lose in the day because of inefficiency is it 5 minutes is it 10 minutes uh, 20 minutes even. Just give everyone a second there just to pop some time in. One hour, two hours, one hour is e easily for some people. Um, who else we have? Yes, 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 we lose time. One hour easily, two hours, one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. Um, hours, according to, to Fiona, one hour, according to, to, to John, one to two hours plus. <clears throat> okay. and. Well, we're going to we'll, we'll loop back in on that point later on, but we can see here that people are losing anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours plus per day on tankless tasks, perhaps pointless activities um, and things that are kind of maybe a little bit frustrating uh, as well. So what is Lean and what is the Lean for Micro program? Well, the Lean for Micro program focuses on improving the way you do things in your business. Um, but the first part of it really is to start by looking across your business and starting to see, ask yourself, what is it that you see? So if you were to turn around, if you're in your business today, turn around, have a look around, what is it that you see? Would you see perfect meetings, everyone happy, or would you see perfect workspaces where everything is clean, neat and tidy, and it's a place for everything and everything in its place? Or would it be a bit more like my office here, where there's a clutter and disorder, where there's time lost looking for equipment, files, folders, um, all manner of things. Are you the type of person or is there somebody within your organization that says, sure, I know where everything is. 
I can put my hand on things in just a second. When you look at your teamwork, your communication, your processes, how do they flow? How do they work? Are they smooth and in perfect harmony or unison, like the guys on the left-hand side here on the bike? Or do they fall flat in their face from time to time, like the guys on the right-hand side? Because what's what lean is, lean is centered around the belief that waste exists in all processes. And our aim through any kind of lean project is to uh, eliminate waste and make sure that we only have steps that add value to our customers. Okay, so a nice simple definition, lean is the belief that waste exists in all processes and our aim is to eliminate that waste and only have uh, steps that add value to our customers. Because that's what lean is. Lean is remarkably simple. Okay, it's not always easy to, to implement. It's not always easy to under. It's not always easy to 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 do. It's not always easy to change people. But it is a remarkably simple concept to understand. For most businesses, it requires a problem to solve, and that for most businesses, that's not a problem. There's no shortage of problems in most organizations. It requires some tools and techniques. Uh, but not too many of them, okay? And especially at the start, they're quite simple tools and techniques. It does require from yourself as owners, managers, um, leaders of various levels within your organization, it requires you to have good leadership and, 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 and what we call a growth mindset. And that growth mindset is belief that we can do better with what we have. It also requires from yourself as leaders within your organization, a little bit of a commitment. And I'm going to say almost a relentlessness and a relentless commitment um, and a belief that we can do what we do within this organization, uh, but we can do it better. Okay. And that's what it is. Lean essentially is doing what you do already successfully within your organization, but finding ways to do it faster, finding ways to do it better, improving the quality, and all the while trying to do it together with your actual team. So nice and simple, not coming to tell you how to run your business, run your school, run your hotel, run your alarm service. Lean essentially is just taking what you're doing already successfully, maybe with some, some frustrations and maybe with some pain points across the day, but finding ways to do it faster, better, and together um, as your team. And that's exactly what John McLaughlin did um, from AES and uh, Berg Alarm, who's gonna, we're going to talk to next. Uh, John, I'm going to John to introduce himself, but John took part in two lean programs. They've they've two slight two different companies there, really. John, um, I'm just going to spotlight John so everybody can everybody can see him. I'm going to add John to the spotlight. Um, so, uh, John, do you want to introduce yourself? Good afternoon. Thanks, Stuart. <clears throat> My name is John McLaughlin. I'm uh, managing director of AES, which is Alarm Equipment Supplies. We're a distributor of electronic alarm equipment and uh, CCTV and all different types of security equipment throughout Ireland. And we also have a second company, Burger Alarm, which is an, a well-known installer throughout Cork and Cork County. Um, I suppose when I, I looked at this uh, lean as just one of these guru sessions coming out of COVID and just um, said I'd give it a try because Leo, Leo approached me and I've done a few courses with Leo and I got a lot out of them. Uh, and what struck me most about this is that um, it allowed me to look at all our activities um, of the business, because we started with AES, which is also, um, that, <laughs> that was hard for us to, to, to swallow at the start. And in fairness, the team, the team did get involved, but we, we were amazed at, at, at the difference it made. And it, it didn't swoop down and make us super efficient overnight. What it did is it, it looked at little little things that we did, um, like adding a workstation to, to where a lot of work was being carried out that wasn't there before, saving time walking up and down our stores, um, even looking at, at, at how the guys went about, you know, doing their invoicing, how they, they went about packaging their stuff, even just structure, how, how we structured our days, really. Um, and the, the results were phenomenal. Um, I can't hear you now, Stuart. 
you know, I might just I'm here I'm here I might yeah. just I might just pull you back to that guru yeah. point that you made at the start because I mean yeah. that was a really interesting point so <clears throat> and I know I had an initial call with you and then it was our colleague Mick that 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 had worked with you um but what what was it why we why we are skeptical because I think I look to be honest and it, it's such an interesting point because so many people are are skeptical you know of um because it's a commitment of time and resources uh you know the the cost yeah. is, is heavily subsidized as you, as you know and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that later on so financially the outlay is not a lot but it's commitment of time from your from your team so why we are skeptical really do you think or why do... i suppose like we're, we're a small we were a small company i just stick with aes for the moment because it's a small company and everybody had their role and when you start talking about six sigma or start talking about you know, these different theories, you know, you're you kind of open avenues and it's ignorance on my part, I suppose, and and on the, the, the board that we didn't know enough about them, you know. And I suppose you're always afraid that you get down a rabbit hole, you know, and we we've all been there. You go down this rabbit hole, it's not adding to your business, and you're you're a couple of months into this and you find, ah, oh, what have we done, you know? Um and our our biggest resource it's it, like is time. Is our most valuable resource, and um, the money aspect, like through Leo and these places, you know, the, the finance side it wasn't big. The the time we put into it, uh, it's important that you do it. If you're going to do it, do it right, you know. So that's what you'd be afraid of. Did you're you have a, Did you have an awareness of of lean beforehand? I mean, you mentioned Six Sigma uh, there, which we tend not to mention at all. But did you have an awareness of lean in the business? Uh, or yourself I did. I did. I did. I did this um, course during COVID and it was just a kind of a, a two hour long lecture. And, you know, I think I muted after half an hour and started to do my emails. I kind of just got a bit lost. You know, some of the, some of the principles are, are so easy that like, you know, keep it simple, stupid, you know, like I'd, I'd have missed the essence of them because it didn't relate directly to me or my business. That's the big difference with Jigsaw and with this course was this was really you were given an introductory, but if I can mention Michael, he really gets into your business. He really asks you the, the right questions and he challenges you in the in the best possible way because like we've done jobs for the last 20 years in the same way, you know. Nobody has ever asked us to stop and say, Why are you doing it that way? Okay. You know? Not that it was wrong. Not that it was, but it it was just it was real practical and really geared towards us. You know, and it's 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 interesting you mentioned the the six sigma part because uh, you know for anyone who doesn't know you know there's 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 lean and then there's six sigma, um and usually with smaller businesses, um unless they're very um, high volume manufacturing or production driven or they've 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 a high volume of data. Six Sigma doesn't really come come into it. They're two different kind of schools of thought. Lean um, at this level is definitely far more simple. As I, as I added that slide earlier, it's it's not always easy to implement because it requires change and I'm sure who likes change, um, but the concepts of it are, are simple and kind of challenging. And we'll talk through some of them a bit later on as well. So it's interesting, it's good, it's good to make that point that there, there isn't an awful lot to you know the the program itself there isn't an awful lot to learn i think you, you 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 might agree with me on this that when you take part in the two group sessions which are the training component of it most of the the training component is the participants talking about the challenges in their business as opposed to that kind of lecture on uh, on on lean and here it is and why you have to have to do it as well um when you mentioned that when mick started to uh, Mick McAuliffe that worked with you and on on the project um, from Jigsaw. He mentioned that he started to to ask questions, uh, which kind of a coaching approach. You know what did what kind of came out in in that dialogue? Um, very practical stuff. Uh, it likes to, I suppose the problem is when you're so close to something, you 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 can't see the wood from the trees. You're so used to doing so. Like just for AES, one of the the, the easiest solutions was. Like probably 60% of our sales is from one product range. And that product range is throughout the stores and the way it comes in. And 
like it's now under the counter. Okay. So like most, most of the customers that come into the to the, the customer's showroom gets the product, it's under the counter. So there's no walking down the stores, walking back up, you know, oh, I forgot this. It's there, you know, so it's so easy. And the time spent, um, huge, huge time savings on it. Yeah. Um, I, and that, I, sorry, yeah. No, go on, you go. No, and that that's that was a kind of feature throughout the whole process. You know, that like the, there was no you know big shot of lightning so we we haven't restructured the business, we haven't restructured the stores, we just changed things around that gave us huge time savings. And that yeah. time savings then, yeah. Yeah, and it's that it's that small kind of incremental change. I know when we were discussing it yesterday, you 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 reckon that those kind of changes in the warehouse bringing, uh, you know, we call it something we call it point of view storage. So bringing very common items closer to where they're required, and even understanding that there are things that are higher volume or higher demand, and making that kind of simple layout change. Uh, I, th- I think you were talking about in terms of like a thirty percent decrease in efficiency for for the warehouse staff. We don't. Yeah, I mean, which and is... I, I would see that in terms of hours, it was nearly 15 hours a week that right. instead of them working in the stores, they were actually on doing sales calls. And was that so... 15 hours a week? And, and, and I mean, was that across, was that for every person or across the across the team? That was across the three guys that are in the stores. There were seven, 15 hours a week that they okay. spent on sales calls. So that's, that's, that's five hours a person. Yeah. It is. Um, and, and I mean, if... You... Go on. Like to get those sales calls done, you were looking at employing somebody, which is going to cost us in in the region of sixty five k a year. So that's that's a huge saving for a small company. Yeah, and I mean that's a it's it's a cost avoided. It it doesn't yeah. put it as you said it doesn't put sixty or sixty five thousand back in your pocket, but it stops you having to having to spend it as well. But just for everyone here, I mean, I mean, I know for myself. If you think five hours. You know that a change in layout, change of structure can give you back five hours. And um, for some of us, that would mean just getting home on time, you know, and not having that kind of hassle. And um, but as you said, you can reinvest that five hours from that team, and you could put it into the the sales call and offset. Maybe not avoid completely the need to hire additional salespeople, but delay it until you have the full full capacity as well. You mentioned about the 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 salespeople there earlier as well. What was the yeah. The big change well, there. You see, because these these guys were making new business calls, you know, these these fifteen hours a week new business calls, we were getting new customers without having to employ another rep who would have a car on under his backside, you know. So like, and all the expenses with that. So like, we were increasing our business. I would say in about three hundred k a year, you know. So that was quite quite a big increase in our sales, you know. And we work on small margins, so. Every time you add another body to the to the pool, it's it's a hefty expense, you know, on the small margins that we work on. Yeah, and it's such it's such an interesting point. I mean, so that like you mentioned about the the potential cost of of a of a, of a salesperson and a car and fuel and all that goes with it, but if if you can get the same um, effectiveness or the same productivity and output with the existing resources. You avoid that. I think we call it we call it cost avoidance, but you have this headcount avoidance that you 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 postpone the need to hire an additional person, or the additional hiring goes into perhaps a higher value um, part of the business, and then the increase in sales. And I think with you know with everybody here, and I, I think everybody will agree with this, the challenge to recruit at the moment might get easier with some of the the, the changes we're seeing in the tech companies and so on. But the challenge to recruit and the limitations in availability of resources is one of the greatest challenges that we're going to be facing in this um, in the coming years is the shortage of resources and of, of skilled resources as well. So, you know, that inward focus on doing more with what you with what you have uh, really is kind of kind of key. How, what size is the team in, in, in AES? John? It's a team of five. Team of five. So like you. You have three in the stores, you have myself, and then you've got one on the road. And I suppose the biggest, the biggest, I suppose, savings for us was because we have, we have two companies here and Burgalam is a big customer of AES. Okay. 
the interaction between AES and Burgerdam was causing a huge problem, which we I, I had never realized, you know, I, I'd never seen it. And because I wasn't spending so much time in stores and on counters and, you know, generally dealing with AES problems, I had more time to look at things in kind a of helicopter view, you know, look at it more strategy, more, look at down the road, five years, start doing a bit, bit of planning, you know, stuff that was kind of being left either to late at night mm. or to weekends, you know, so... But when I started looking at the, the interaction between AES and burglar alarm, burglar alarm were causing severe problems for AES. You know, because they're on their doorstep and because they're so connected, like we have the same owner, so you know, you naturally have an affinity towards them, but they were causing news inefficiencies within AES. So we started to look at that. And, did and, the... and that was... Carry on, John. Yeah. I, there was a huge amount of time taken up by the lads. Uh, on that one alone, you know, and it, it came back to even returns of product, you know, in, in giving out, because Burglammer is an installer and they might install, they might be doing a job in Kilkenny, AES were giving them double stock so they wouldn't have to return. They, they were really getting everything from AES and there was little coming back, you know, so we were okay. able to, to look at that whole thing and streamline it. And did it, and I, and I know when you tackled the projects, you tackled them one in AES and then one in, in, in Burgalarm, and they were somewhat treated as in separate entities, you know, but then always with the. And they were definitely, yeah. Um, with the eye and the other. But uh, did you find the process asked, the questions got uncomfortable or the challenging became uncomfortable in, in a positive way, I suppose? They did. And again, Michael said my height here because. He was able to, I would say, put questions and challenge others in the team that would have been made very difficult for me to do. Okay. Because, you know, the, the, the kind of motto around here at the moment, I was, so what, you know? So, so, so what? What difference does it make? Why are we doing it? You know, what are we getting out of it? You know, and, and I suppose you're questioning everything that you're doing in a systematic way. It's not you coming every day and there's a question on your desk. It's not like that. We look at our process and Burgalarm are ISO. So our processes are well documented. So it's actually easier for Burgalarm to, to, to do this lean. But the rewards are even, even bigger again, because if anybody knows the security industry in any installation business, labor is, is probably the, that's where you make or break a sale. You know what I mean? That's where your profit is. Yeah, and the, the administration burden on an industry like that is is phenomenal you know and we've worked with a few alarm companies and seen that as well the regulation is 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 is, is tough and you mentioned iso and i think an interesting point with iso is you know for, uh, yes you need some some businesses need to do it okay not every business needs to do iso although the practice of documenting processes and so on is good practice but iso doesn't necessarily focus in on it's it's about standards standardization, but it doesn't necessarily focus in on efficiency, um, no. and that's what Lean will do. It will take those standards, yes, follow them, but are we doing them in the most efficient way? And the point you made there about the you know so what kind of kind of question reminds me of uh, of, of of another client actually in Cork who they use the, the, you know the question of could we do this in a leaner way became a key question in all of their kind of meetings when they were talking about a process. And because the, the, the team had such a positive attitude to the efficiency side of it, it got completely uh, depoliticized or the, the, the harm got taken out. It wasn't, say, it wasn't seen as saying, what, what do you mean could I do it in a leaner way? You know, it, was, it, was, it was almost a challenge, you know, here's the process, it's worked. Could we do that in a leaner way? And then we challenged ourselves and the team challenged themselves to see, well, actually, is there a more efficient way to do it or, or an easier way or one that improves the quality, uh, one that's better for the business, one that's better for the customer? Uh, the involvement of the team, which is kind of key here as well, how did how did that work for you in, in either of the um, projects? I, I think it worked very well over the whole process. But I think at the start, everybody thinks when you say leaner way or more efficient way, Time in motion always comes up, you know, that type of, of study. And it's not that. It's it, like the guys that, when they got involved in it, they found their own kind of efficiencies. They found better ways of doing something. They, they didn't hurt a lot of this stuff, you know. So um, 
when they seen their time being freed up and used for different stuff, their job became more, you know, a broad, broader spectrum of activities and more interesting. And like they still do it to this day. We meet every month and part of our, our, our meeting is lean, you know, is yeah. and we don't call it lean. We just call it, you know, any ideas, you know, any, anything we can do better. Um, we, were, we were in the process of looking at automation. And I'm so glad we did the lean before we did any automation. Because one of the things about automation is that it's, it's, it's just as easy to lean, to, to automate an inefficient system as it is to yeah. automate an, an efficient system. And once it's automated, you have it for life. Do you know, yeah. there's, there's no way of getting it out of there, you know, so um, it, it was perfect timing for us. Yeah, and, and, and one of the, the it gets a lot of people will, will talk about digital and we hear a lot of talk about digital and digital transformation. Um, and Lean is kind of that. You know, it's it's not digital transformation, but it's a starting point of that. Um, and you know, quite frequently within a lean project, you will work on improving processes to a point where the obvious next step improvement is for some kind of software or automation or a fancier Excel spreadsheet or a new software accounts package. You can only polish it so far. Uh, you know, so the but, but what I would say to you, and John is nodding your head, I know this was part of your project as well, is typically if we haven't made our processes efficient, first of all, the cost of that digital transformation or digital trans transition is far more expensive because we're trying to find a, a product uh, out there to the way we work without actually questioning the way we work. And what software developers will give us is exactly what we ask for. So we'll describe our processes, good, bad, or indifferent, and they will quite frequently design a, a service or a solution around those processes. Um, and really, if we'd have revised our processes first and made them more efficient, that solution would be a lot more simple um, and potentially even off the shelf. So, I mean, it's it's if you're thinking of digital transformation or taking your business to the next stage from a digital perspective, it's lean first, digital second. You know, you want to make sure your processes are clear and understood and it will have a direct impact on your on your on your cost. And a lot of the lean projects that take place across the country do have an element of digital and digitization as part of the process improvement as well. And um, I don't, don't think yours did have an amount of digital in it, really. It was more centered around. We didn't when we started, but we do know we have a lot more. I mean, like in Borogram in particular, you know, they have the handhelds going out from the service yeah. right, right into the invoicing. Uh, and it, it it's it's saving a lot of time on the admin. I think probably about I think there was about twenty six hours a week we've saved on on administration within Burger Arm. Wow! Uh, and and more importantly here, and I think this is the other thing with Lean that we kind of I, I tend to forget is that it's based on your customers as well. You know, we do an awful lot of activities behind the scene. Our customer doesn't care. He doesn't really want to know we have a girl typing for two hours and that's in your your bill he doesn't want to know any of that but he, he does want the bill in a, in a format that you know that's suitable for him like that's what lean does it, it you know it, mm. it puts the emphasis on what your customer needs not what we'd like you know so and that's that's key yeah one of the one of the early points at which i start to perhaps lose people and then help them try and think a bit differently is within the workshops is this point of nobody cares about your business right? nobody your 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 customers don't care as you said that you know dave in accounts or admin has to spend two hours writing up a report don't care it's not my problem i they only care and your customers only care about the problem that you're solving for them um, and that problem in many cases we we talk about in the definition of it, it's value the value that you're creating for them so that's the installation of a security barrier an alarm, a CCTV system, whatever that might be, the monitoring, the, the how quickly the, the the parts when I go to the death to the counter to buy my components, the, that's all. Your customer only cares about the problem that they have and not about how long it takes you to do it. And um, so really, that switches the onus back onto us, you know, within the business to say, well, how can we get to that part uh, quicker, better, faster? 
uh, and, and you know, and higher quality and get the team involved. And, you know, really that's what it's about. Um, but that's tough. You know, it, it, it's tough to think that some of, a lot of the hard work we do in terms inside in our business, our, our, our customers just don't value. Um, so we have to find ways to do them, do them smarter. But there anything else jumped and, out? And that and, is, is, Ron John, sorry. Like working smarter is, you know, it's, it's a cliche, but it, it really is working smarter and, you know, focusing on, on the things that are, are, you're eliminating waste as opposed to, you know, doing what you do better. You know, you're just eliminating the waste that makes it so easy then that you can concentrate on, on what, what the customer sees and, and will pay for. Um, actually just and as you mentioned waste i'm just going to pop um i'm actually just going to pop a, a, a the, the the waste slide up um because it's it's oh, it up there yeah um it's it's it it kind of really is it, it kind of really is relevant to so much of what you did um waste waste um within lean is any step in a process um that doesn't add value to your customer, okay? So it doesn't bring your product closer to its final form, fit, or function. It doesn't really do anything, really, but add a step within it. And in Lean, we have these eight wastes. Um, and the eight wastes are defects, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized talent, transport, inventory, motion, and excess processing. Um, and what they do really, they fall into this acronym of, of, of downtime, if anyone uh, has, hasn't noticed that yet, that that, that acronym actually spells out um, spells out downtime. Um, so they're the eight ways that we look for in lean. And I think John's first example there, earlier, earliest example there where he talked about um, the, the time saved in the in the workshop or in the warehouse. You know, so we were making frequent trips out and back to the back stores we brought a smaller consignment of a popular popular items to under the counter and that reduced the, reduced the waste. And the waste of that reduced was the waste of, of motion of the operator of the warehouse guys walking out and transport of carrying the product back in. Um, and as you said, that saved five hours per man per week after a bit of analysis yeah. was, was done to it. Um, the, the other waste, John, you, you saw them, um, well, all of them, really, honestly, like between Borglam and AS, definitely all, all eight were covered. But like, and and in both, like the inventory with Borglam would have been a big one because, you know, giving them double stock, you know, to, to make sure that they're not running out, you know, that wasn't really efficient for, for AES, you know, like, so, like if Borglam had their own stock and had a look at after, that would be more efficient for both companies. The waiting, you know, waiting for for a part. You know, mm. by streamlining the whole process, Burgenland got their order in in good time, and AES were able to make sure that they had their parts. So all all that was there. Non utilized talent comes along with that because if you have a technician out on a site and he's standing around because he hasn't got a part, what a waste for for both companies. Um, and then and we we found ourselves eliminating extra trips. You know, going to a customer and having to do an extra trip because we didn't have everything that they needed in the first place so there was they're they're all covered honestly they're all covered and, and so simple you know yeah. the categories are so so broad but like um there's no part of the business that hasn't gained something from it yeah i, I mean they are they, yeah they are ev they are everywhere within a business uh for all uh, for all businesses to um to see um it is a real it is a, is a real challenge and this is and you know from a simplicity perspective you know this is where it starts you know it it, it starts with you know exploring you know if i look around at what i do in the business so look around at my processes you know how are do any of these wastes occur are any of them present in there right wrong have to be done are the regulation or not are they present and it's using this as the as the framework to start the conversation it really doesn't get much more complex than this uh, for most businesses um and 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 this is the starting point you know and 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 it's and it's starting to put this lens of of waste across everything that you do um so if you're in a in in, in a hotel or school alarm company painters and decorators as we saw with trevor uh in in the video earlier on doesn't matter you know you look at what you do uh do any of these wastes occur if they fall into the category of these wastes they're either uh 
necessary. We have to do them. And they're necessary because of the current technology or health and safety legislation or some other criteria that makes them necessary. But in a lot of cases, they're necessary because of the way we currently do things. If they're not necessary, we should get rid of them straight away, but we should start to question why we're doing them. Like if we take that practice that you mentioned of the burglar alarm guys taking twice as much, I mean, that sounds like something we hear all the time of the just in cases. Um, I don't know how many people here on the call today actually have uh, suffer from the just in cases where you know you need you need two, but you get four just in case. The yeah, and the impact of that then is 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 you know in in your case is now even if they were separate businesses, the customer then actually has buys two because they're afraid they won't be able to get more quick from the supplier that then creates the effect of scarcity in the supplier so they buy more uh, although they don't actually need them and then the customer brings back the one they don't need and then they've more in stock um, and the and and that process of providing one creating a sales record for it creating an invoice for it then processing the return then actually having too much stock on hand or incorrect levels or high values it's it's all of this stuff and you know these are small things you know um, they're small processes that we do across the business every day, but they, Jesus, they repeat and they repeat and they repeat, and that's where it, it adds up. Um, and, and they really add up. They really do add up. You know, the, over, over a couple of weeks. The level of the the level of the people engaging, John, did, did everyone took part and was happy to take part? No. Not sure what happy now, but. It, Every, most most people were okay with it, you know. They, they thought, like myself, I suppose, they were skeptical at the start. And when when they found out that we weren't standing there with a stopwatch on them, you know, that that's not what it was about. I think they took to it a bit better, you know. It made yeah. their job a lot easier, you know. A technician doesn't want to be driving, you know, from one end of the city to the other because he hasn't got a part. He'd rather be doing what he's good at, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing that 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 I suppose fascinated me, we we took on. A, a couple of guys there towards the, the start of the year and the training is much more simple because a lot of the processes that we that we do they're documented we even forced by michael i'd say to to photograph and video certain aspects of what they do and that's done so honestly i could actually do it myself <laughs> you know some of the jobs i can actually go down and do it myself not that i want to know or anything <laughs> but you know, it, it makes it that easier. So when a guy is, is starting out, you can be training him up on these jobs that so easily, you know, so that's and, that's a good turn for us. Do you know, it's it's interesting that you made this point earlier. It's interesting you made this point earlier on and, and I didn't I didn't address it at the time, but it allows the the, the member the, your 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 team to get to the work they prefer quicker, you know, and they're they've less time spent looting and, and farting around looking for stuff and carrying out frustrating tasks and trying to find somebody with the right information and they can actually get to the work that they probably enjoy a bit better um, and and that life becomes just a bit easier the work becomes yeah. becomes easier for everybody as, as well um, my biggest nightmare in the morning would be to, to see two or three engineers hanging around the stores oh yeah that's I come just... in at half eight in the morning and there's two or three hanging around waiting for equipment that's a nightmare for me because that's that's profit gone down the drain yeah it's and it's dead time and 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 i mean it does it does frustrate people you know it it, it it frustrates people not to have these things things right it it is an effort to put the to put the work in but the return i think as you've kind of mentioned today in the various different savings is is there um if you were to if 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 you were to say anything to anyone here on the the the, the call today in terms of that they were not sure or you know whether it's for them what what kind of would you say to people uh, considering taking part in it okay well I, I tell you it's not it's not a, a job that i could have actually done it myself even though myself and the team put a lot of work into it it's not a job we could have done ourselves i don't think we'd have ever even come up with the idea we're so used to doing what we do for so long that we wouldn't see it the, the beauty of this is that you you get a, a guy who's who's outside the business and he doesn't care what business you do either. He's just going to challenge you to look at mm -hmm. things and you, you start looking at different aspects of your business. And it's a systematic approach and it's simple. It is really simple. And 
as you as you see the rewards coming back, the benefits of it, you actually start getting more involved in it yourself. You know, you start questioning your own activities, even my yeah. own day to day activity. You know, like Michael gave me the the sand, the gravel, and the, and the stones. You know, yeah. that task. You know, what I spend my time doing now is completely different to what I spent my time doing a year ago, and that to me is the, is probably the best benefit because I'm looking. I'm looking ahead and I know my teamers are constantly doing what they need to be doing in as efficient manner as we've got to yet. But there's still always room for improvement. You know, so for anybody, it's all I'd say is give it a try. No matter how skeptical you are, you have nothing to lose by it. Um, and the help is fantastic. It is uh, great. Thanks, John. Just I, I, I might just get you just to, to explain the sand, the gravel and the stones as a... I suppose as a as a as a challenge just for anyone okay. who doesn't it doesn't know. Okay. Well if you if you fill a, a, a glass, you know, with, with stones and gravel and sand, like I mean, you know, if if the stones are are the things you're spending a lot of your time on, you know, <laughs> you get very few stones in, in in a glass. You get more gravel in it, do you know what I mean? So maybe the gravel might be maybe added more value to what you're doing. But the sand, that's the gold. That's the stuff where you can get so much more sand into a glass than you could stone. So I was spending a lot of time on, on the stones and no time on the gravel. Whereas when I started, you know, concentrate on the gravel or the, the, the sand, I got a lot more out of my day and the company benefited a lot more, you know. So um, my job is to be looking at margins and even what activities we should be involved in rather than you know individual products or in yeah. pricing for an individual customer just lift the head of a small bit okay that's brilliant well look john i just want to say thanks a million thanks for giving up your time today and the and and, and the few calls beforehand i think everybody will give a um, a virtual or a, a zoom round of applause for you to thank you for that and thanks for thanks for sharing um yeah thanks thanks a million and it's uh, great thanks, to such a, thanks such to a, all the jigsaw for the help as well just a, a, a positive uh, experience um just on um oh uh, sorry just bear me one second guys on uh, spotlight john for you um so look if you're like john look i've no doubts uh you know great story there um carried it went to play part in the lean program with with uh with the local enterprise office in cork um and, and 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 really got benefits from it but don't understand or don't underestimate the the commitment that's actually involved in 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 the process as well uh, and i've no doubt that that of all the people here on the on the call today you work hard every day um so you get up in the morning um you stumble out of bed and you get in there and you have a fair expectation that everything that you do is worthwhile and adds value but as we talked about waste uh, with 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 John, um, what you will quickly see, and this is kind of our thought process with Lean, and this is our starting point, and we work back from it, is that about ninety five percent of what we do, or ninety ninety five percent of what we do, is non value adding activity and potentially waste. Okay, um, and uh, and like those eight wastes that we pulled up on the slide, um, so Lean really is about kind of looking at the the processes that we have in the business. And looking at the different steps or tasks or actions that we do to complete that process um, and really starting to say, does waste occur within this step? It's not saying an entire step uh, is, is waste, but does waste occur within this step? So when we go to execute this step, uh, do any of these wastes occur? And as we said, these wastes fall into this acronym of, of downtime and, and their defects, overproduction, uh, waiting non-utilized talent, transport, inventory, motion, and excess processing. And it's by identifying these wastes in any of your processes, especially as we're starting out in Lean, this starts the conversation about why we're doing things in a certain way. And then it starts a conversation about what we can do to actually actually change it. And um, because that's what Lean is, it's about process improvement. It's about taking um, your existing process and, and, and making it better. Okay, making it better, making it faster, uh, and, and doing it at a lower cost uh, where where possible as well, and also including all of your team in part as part of the process as well. So that change, that any changes that you do make, it sticks, and everybody gets the benefit from it.
the lean mindset really is about this kind of uh, it's about respect for people. OK, so it's about uh, understanding people's creativity um, and their knowledge and the contribution that they can make. It's a team effort. It's not a one man band uh, in, in the business making all the changes. It's about working together as a team, getting everyone's views on the change, seeing how they're going to impact um, and working together to deliver the goal. Um, it's about, you know, recognizing it's OK to be wrong. Yeah. You know, we, we don't get things right. The way we've done things in the past perhaps isn't necessarily the way we do things in, in the future. So it's OK to be wrong um, and we, we should and we need to ask for help. Um, improvement, you know, within me is is endless. It's continuous. You know, we, we, we try to make it better every day, you know, and as, as John said, in, in all of their meetings, they bring up lean or look, how can we improve this? Call it whatever we want to call it. But how can we improve this? How can we make this this better? It's about perhaps accepting that an awful lot, 90, 95, 60, 75% of what we do perhaps is waste. Um, we bet the, the three guys in the warehouse in, in AES didn't think that they had any wasted activity. But as John said, they saved five hours per person just by moving uh, some items around that could be put into other higher value activities. Um, don't worry about what other people are doing. Uh, we call it what aboutery or otherism. Don't worry about, well, what about that person over there? We've plenty of our own waste to work on. So start at that point as well. And it's about smooth and steady change rather than kind of fast and inconsistent. So it's like the, the tortoise and the hare. Um, and don't worry about not knowing uh, uh, anything or not knowing anything about lean or Six Sigma, as John mentioned earlier on. Um, it, there's never about the lack of knowledge. It's always about knowing that there's more to know. And just from, from knowing John, from taking part in the programs, like he spent a lot of COVID uh, and the last couple of years, just taking the, taking the opportunity of courses and training that were out there to him to better develop himself, but also better develop the business. And as such, you know, create more sustainable jobs within the organization as well. So, you know, it's never about not having the knowledge to do it. It's about just knowing that there's, there's a bit more to know here and, and, and what can I do about it? Um, and time is never a waste. Quite frequently when companies start in this, they talk about this is a waste of time and this is a waste of time or time is wasted here. Time only ever measures waste. So you need to, we can't make time anywhere. Um, so what you need to do is kind of look at what it is that's taking up the time and start to take a deeper dive on that. So um, what it is that's taking up the salespeople's time, what it is that's taking up the loading time, why is it that one company was taken to just in case? You know, what is the problem? What's the root cause of that? Rather than just stopping it, why is it happening? And what are they concerned about? And are the jobs not scoped right? Or are they were concerned that we won't get the stock back in place? You know, so take that deeper dive into why something is happening rather than just, you know, dropping the, 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 the hammer to say why it, it, it and, and changing it. So is lean for your business? Well, look, absolutely lean is for your business. Um, uh, throughout the years, you know, we've had butchers and bakers and candlestick makers and actually had butchers, bakers and candlestick makers uh, through the lean program up and down the, 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 the country. So yeah, it's, it's, for, it's for all businesses um, that are out there. Um, what can you do to access or to, to get involved? You know, is, is say hello, contact ourselves. You, you have our emails. We'll follow, uh, send out some further information after the session today. But there's an open call for Lean for Micro programs uh, nationwide. So localenterpriseoffice.ie forward slash lean. Uh, the submit link is here. We will pop it into the chat and we will also um, send an email afterwards with the, the various different links. The program is significantly subsidized. So how the program works is that uh, you would, there's two group training workshops, uh, which, which are due to take place on the 23rd of February and the 2nd of March for the Southwest, for the Southwest region. I think we might have some people from other counties on board. We'll, 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 we'll loop in directly with you about that. But particularly for the Southwest, these are the fixed dates, the 23rd and the 2nd. After that, then you're assigned the lean coach, the MIC, um, that that John was referring to uh, as one of the one of the jigsaw coaches. So after the group training, uh, a, a lean coach will come and work with you individually um, on your business. Um, 
that takes place in a blended fashion, depending on what it is that you that you need. So a mix of online and in person, um, depending on the type of industry. Uh, but that person is there for you five half days over about 10 weeks. There is a time commitment here. Don't underestimate the, the time that's involved um, for you to, to, to work on this. Uh, the cost isn't dear. I think it might. I actually don't have that information to have. It's about 150 euros for the entire program. It is not dear, 150, 200 euros. It's significantly subsidized, but you don't have to worry about that at the application phase. So if you think you're interested, apply. Yeah, if you think you're interested, but it's not for a few weeks or a few months, apply. Okay, so get your application in. It gets you into the system and, and, and shows intent for them securing budgets for future training as well. So look, any questions about the program, reply to any of the emails that you got from us um, or go forward and complete the, the application as well or reach out to the local enterprise office. Um, there are nearly uh, two and three, uh, 275,000 businesses in Ireland registered, uh, of which about 92% of them are, um, are micro enterprises. And up until the end of last year, only about 1,500 of those businesses have taken part in a Lean for Micro program. So this is a real opportunity for you um, as a small business to do something different and to stand out with the full support and financial assistance um, of, of, of the government and through, through, the, through the taxpayer support. So huge opportunity to save time and money. The 1,500 businesses that have, that have, that have taken part have saved um, um, over 70 million euros um, in, uh, yeah, have saved over 70 million euros uh, by taking part in lean and making changes to what they do. And that's an average of about 34,000 per business. Some save 5,000, some save 55,000. Um, it depends on the size of the business as well, but there's documented savings there. Um, but for most business owners, the, 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 the benefits are far more intangible or untangible whatever way we want to in where we call it i'm not sure what it is intangible or untangible and um, for most small business owners you know they've structured work processes uh, as john mentioned it's about working smarter not harder and um, we get more competitive our processes are more agile we can change we can respond uh, to do things different um, but for the staff and for the team, especially in smaller businesses, when we work in diverse roles, we have to cross functions, we have to be on top of more things. Um, the structured work processes tends to improve owners and, and team well-being. But I know for myself and I know for a lot of businesses that we work with, you can just get home on time one day a week, maybe, or two days a week, who knows. You know, you're working less at the weekend. Your head is less in work when you're at home as well, because you does a does a it can help bring kind of a greater sense of control to what's happening, um, uh, within the within the business. We started talking about the the hidden week at the at the start, um, and I asked you guys, you know, how much time you were effectively losing across the day, and people have between one hour and two hours and three hours and and so on, but if we waste just ten minutes a day. Uh, uh, every day because we're disorganized that 10 minutes translates into about 50 minutes uh, uh, across the week that 50 minutes across the week translates across 48 weeks to about 2400 minutes and that 2400 minutes is 40 hours per year okay so just if we waste 10 minutes per day for 48 weeks of the year that relates to about 40 hours a year in terms of productivity. And for those who said one hour, they're at six weeks per year, two hours, you're at 12 weeks per year. That said, uh, these small, simple changes really should be um, prompting us, I suppose, to reach out, get started, avail of the support, uh, and we'll pop an email to you later on about more of them as well. Okay, so that is us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your for your time. A special thanks to 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 John um, from Burgle Arm and AES for taking the time uh, to share with us today um, about his story. Um, and thank you all for for attending. I'm going to stop the recording. And if anybody wants to hang on or ask myself or John a question, more than happy to uh, um, to to hang on as well.